why luxury brands burn their own products. Everyone uses fashion products in some capacity, no matter how small. The wealthy, in particular, are fans of luxury brands such as Gucci, Ralph Lauren, Louis Vuitton, Cartier, and others. Due to the diverse range of demands from their customers, the fashion industry cannot operate in continuous mode. So, luxury brands create and produce the newest collections almost every week in order to satisfy customers and uphold their reputation. Since not everything produced is used, a significant portion of these brand new products are thrown away and burned in incinerators. Yes, this is the sad reality of the glitzy fashion industry which makes it one of the main sources of greenhouse gas emissions and one of the major polluters of the environment. In this video, we take a look at the secret motives behind the crazy practice of destroying unsold stock in the fashion industry. We'll also be taking a look at how this can be stopped, so make sure you stay tuned. Before we begin, please subscribe to our channel and turn on the post notification bell. Thank you. The fashion industry is evolving so quickly, and there is no fixed trend or wardrobe staple that makes consumers happy. Fast fashion involves manufacturing and delivering new items to stores within a week of their runway debut. This makes it possible for retailers to produce clothing at lightning speeds in order to release the newest trends as soon as possible. Because a new designer batch is on its way to the store while the previous one is still on the shelves, the inventory levels are constantly changing and a significant portion of these goods remain unsold. It is a well-known fact that the fashion industry produces far more than we will ever need. According to Fashion Revolution, since 2000, the amount of clothing produced each year has doubled, even reaching a record-breaking 100 billion in 2014. One major example is the one involving Shein, which may have added as many as 314,877 new items to its U.S. website just within a year. Sadly, about 30% of the clothing produced each season never finds a buyer. Therefore, the unsold stock needs to be moved somewhere to make room for newer, flashier merchandise. But where exactly? to the incinerator. Yes, they get burned. Well-known and long-established brands, particularly those associated with or branded as luxury, including Burberry, Louis Vuitton, and Chanel, resort to the disposal of stock that has been left unsold by sending it to landfill or, alternatively, burning it. A while ago, British luxury brand Burberry brought in $3.6 billion in revenue and destroyed $36.8 million worth of its own merchandise. That seems so unbelievable, doesn't it? According to ABC News, Burberry alone has destroyed more than $150 million worth of goods over the last five years. Yep, you read that number right. Clothes, bags, and perfume are amongst these products disposed of. The brand acknowledged in its annual report from July 2018 that destroying products was just one part of its plan to maintain its reputation for exclusivity. Naturally, this news was not well received by the public. People vowed to boycott Burberry because of its wastefulness, and lawmakers demanded that the British government take action to stop it. The outrage was effective because Burberry later announced that it would stop destroying its excess inventory. However, this practice isn't exclusive to Burberry. It's used by brands from luxury goods maker Louis Vuitton to mainstream brand Nike. These brands destroy products to keep them scarce and exclusive, but the specifics of who does it and why are rarely made public. But occasionally, tidbits of information will leak out. For instance, a Danish TV station revealed that H&M, a retailer of fast fashion, had burned 60 tons of brand new and unsold clothing since 2013. Also, in May 2018, Richemont, owner of the jewelry and watch brands Cartier, Piaget, and Bonnet Mercier, admitted that over the previous two years, it had destroyed watches, 
valued at about $563 million. A number of retailers, including Urban Outfitters, Walmart, Eddie Bauer, Michael Kors, Victoria's Secret, and JCPenney have also been exposed for engaging in this practice as a result of whistleblowing salespeople. So why exactly do they do this? What is their justification? The justification given by brands for destroying or burning their products is to keep their goods scarce and their brands exclusive. That's it. They don't want it to sell for less because that would be bad for their brand's reputation. They also don't want these products to go on sale. These businesses do not want customers who pay $3,500 for an item to later find it elsewhere for $300. Normally, the most environmentally friendly option would be to recycle or resell the products, but doing so would be much more expensive for the company than simply burning or shredding the item due to the cost of removing the garment from the buttons, zippers, beads, binding, and a great number of other decorative garment accessories. Additionally, the manual labor would bring in another cost. Regarding reuse, even though some businesses do sell their products as used goods, the practice is disfavored by the majority of them because they love the idea of exclusivity through scarcity. The implications caused by such acts affect the environment drastically, and the fashion industry is known for being notorious in its ways of cutting corners with environmental sustainability. Business Insider reported that the fashion industry contributes 10% of the world's carbon emission, depletes water resources, and contaminates river streams. It doesn't just stop at luxury brands. Many other companies dealing in consumer goods are also found to have their returned or unused products being burned. Even Amazon was criticized in Germany for destroying tons of returned goods, including mattresses, washing machines, dishwashers, and cell phones. Another reason why these companies participate in this process, to a greater extent, is because it offers them tax credits. They are therefore forced to completely destroy their products and document the process as evidence of the destruction. So what are the solutions to this? First of all, there are other eco-friendly ways to get rid of the product batch that hasn't sold. These procedures involve recycling, followed by reuse. A company called Reformation uses dead stock clothing and recycles and reuses the items it produces in its own creations. However, recycling is expensive because it requires manual labor to separate the clothing from the accessories. The process will also lower the price at which products can be resold, discouraging full-price transactions. Also, slashing discounts will increase the sale of unsold goods. It will also strengthen the relationship between the producer and the consumer. Additionally, the emphasis can be slightly shifted toward biodegradable fabrics, which might not need to be burned if discarded. Each of these efforts is part of a cycle that should successfully protect the environment. Here's what is changing. The incineration of large quantities of unsold goods is now discouraged in the face of the global warming crisis when we can no longer afford to harm the environment. There isn't a body of law that already prohibits it. However, the fashion industry is under pressure from customers, activists, and even the UN to stop contributing to unfavorable climate change. For example, Europe has recently made changes at the legal and advisory levels that now put a focus on brand practices and improving sustainable development by averting actions like mass incineration. Also, a comprehensive anti-waste law was passed in France in January 2021, and when it goes into effect, it will make it illegal to dispose of any unsold non-food items. Since it is an illogical waste, the French government is now strict and adamant about this ban. In the UK, the Environmental Audit Committee requested that the government put pressure on businesses to be more accountable for the waste they generate. Also, there is a partnership between Louis Vuitton, Dior, and UNESCO on safeguarding important ecosystems for the support of the luxury industry. Additionally, a lot of brands are attempting to adopt modern luxury, which entails being ethical and environmentally conscious. 
Experts say it may take some time for the entire system to change, but the most important thing is that we can use our voices to raise awareness of this problem and the many others that the fast fashion industry has caused until we are finally heard. Do you have any other suggestions on how you think luxury brands can handle the situation better? Let us know in the comments. This is Luxury Channel, and we hope you enjoyed this video. For more awesome videos like this one, please subscribe to our channel and smash that notification button. See you next time.